Hello students, in this video we'll see how to convert the black scholes partial differential equation into the heat equation. So recall that black scholes is partial C partial T, the derivative of the option price with respect to T, plus R S partial C partial S, plus one half sigma squared S squared C S S, the second partial with respect to S, is equal to R times C. So here S is the stock price, R is the risk rate of return, sigma squared is the volatility or implied volatility of the underlying asset, and C is the call premium. It's concatenated, it's coupled with this condition that C at, of S at time T for expiration, that's T, capital T is the expiration, is gonna be the maximum of S minus K and zero. So that's the Black-Scholes equation. So this is Black-Scholes. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a couple changes of variables. And so here's the first change of variable we're going to do. So we're going to do with the first change of variables, we're going to change the time parameter. So we're going to change time. We're going to let T be T capital, the expiration, minus tau over sigma squared over 2. Okay? And so now we can see that when I do the T derivative, the T derivative, the tau derivative and the T derivative are related. And so in other words, we have partial C partial T the derivative of a C with respect to T is the derivative of a C with respect to tau times the derivative of tau with respect to T. Okay? And clearly the derivative of tau with respect to T is going to be negative sigma squared over 2, right? So this is going to be partial, this is going to be C sub tau, and then partial tau, if I throw this negative, if I, if I solve for this, I'm going to have that tau is equal to, I throw the T on the other side and multiply by this, we can write this relationship in the following way we can say that this is going to be a sigma squared over 2 with a negative sign. So negative sigma squared over 2. Okay, great. So that's just a linear change of variables for the time parameter, right? Now the important thing to notice is that when tau is equal to 0, t is at expiration. So I've interchanged the rules of the expiration and the origin for the time axis over here. So that's the first change of variable we're going to do. The second change of variables, we're going to do a classical change of variable, which is something that you see in the Cauchy-Euler equations. What we're going to do is we're going to let S be K times E to the X. Okay? And this is equivalent to saying that X is the natural log of S over K. And this is a quantity that's going to appear later on in the calculation when we find the final form for the Black-Scholes equation. So X is the natural log of S over K. And so now what is partial C partial S? Partial C partial S is partial C partial X times partial X partial S. Partial X partial S is just going to be a 1 over S. So we get this beautiful relationship that S times partial C partial S is really just partial C partial X. In other words, I can replace S times C S with just partial C partial X. Great. Now let me do one more S derivative over here. If I do partial squared C partial S squared, that's going to be, well, it's going to be the x derivative, so it's going to be partial squared c partial x squared times another 1 over s, so it's going to be a 1 over s, and then another 1 over s, so I get a 1 over s squared. Then the derivative of 1 over s with respect to s is negative 1 over s squared, so it's going to be a minus partial c partial x, and then times a 1 over s squared. So this tells me that s squared times partial squared c partial s squared is equal to partial squared c partial x squared, this term over here, minus partial C partial X. Again, this is the same trick that we do for the Cauchy-Euler equations. Great, so now I have all the ingredients to change my, uh, to change the, the equation. So let's do it. So CT gets replaced with what? It gets replaced with negative sigma squared over two C tau. Then I have an S times CS. I can replace that with an R times partial C partial X. So that's gonna be an R partial C partial X, great. Then I have a 1 half sigma squared, so plus 1 half sigma squared. And then I have an S squared CSS. S squared CSS is given by CXX minus CX. And that's equal to R times C. R times C. Great. And so now what's happened over here, now with respect to this X variable, there's no more independent variable X multiplying the function C or Cx or C tau, right? And so if I divide, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to divide this entire equation by sigma squared over two and form a new parameter over here. We're going to set lambda, if we set lambda to be r over sigma squared over two, 
like a new parameter over here, then this becomes negative C tau. Then this is going to be a, um, let's see what we have over here. So we're going to have an R over sigma squared over two. So that's going to be a lambda CX that will cancel out. Then I'll have a plus CXX and then a minus CX and then a uh, lambda C equals lambda C. And then I'll do one final intermediate step. So I'm going to gather the terms together. So what will this tell me? This will tell me that C tau, if I throw it on the other side, is going to be equal to, is going to be equal to lambda minus 1, Cx, and then plus Cxx. And then I have that lambda C over there. I'm going to throw that lambda C over here. So I have a minus lambda C, okay? And I'll do one final uh, scaling to make my problem a little bit nicer. The final scaling I'm going to do is I'm going to let C be the strike price k times new function v. And since this equation is homogeneous, I can replace every single, I can replace, I can multiply everything by k, and we see that the equation for tau is v tau is equal to lambda minus 1 vx plus vxx minus lambda times v by the homogeneity of the equation. So now this is a typical diffusion equation where there's some drift, right? And so what we're going to do with this equation for V is I'm going to take this equation for V and then I'm going to um, find another, I'm going to dilate it by an exponential and that dilation by an exponential by choosing the parameters cor correctly will turn into the ordinary heat equation. So I, this is a classic trick that can be used in the study of parabolic equations. And so let's do it. So I'm going to let V be E to the AX plus B tau. Okay, times a function u of x and tau. Okay, so that's going to be my transformation of the v variable into the u variable. Okay, great. And so what will vx be? So vx, for example, vx will be ux times this exponential, e to the ax plus b tau, plus a e to the a x plus b tau times just a plain old u. Okay, that's the v x. And now I'll do the v x x term. v x x is going to be what? It's going to be, well, I'm going to have a u x x, and I'm going to pull the e to the x out of everything, plus we're going to have 2a u x, because this and this. And then finally, we'll have an a squared from the, from the x derivative of this, a squared. And this is going to be e to the ax plus b tau. And that's good, because now I have these two terms over here taken care of. And now I need to find how v changed with respect to tau. So what will v tau be? Well, that's sort of easy to just put over here. So what's v tau going to be? So v tau is going to be just a, just a u tau plus bu. This, this should be a u over here, of course, right? A u. Great. And then u tau, and then plus a or b u e to the ax plus b tau. Okay, excellent. And so now notice that every term over here in the v equation, v tau, vx, vxx, and v all have this, this exponential factor. So that's going to cancel out from every term. This exponential factor is just going to cancel in each and every one of those terms. Then I'm going to write the exponential factor. So what we're going to have is the following. We're going to have u tau plus bu, that is going to be the v tau contribution over here, will be equal to lambda minus 1, lambda minus 1 times what? vx, and my vx is right over here. It's going to be a ux, ux plus au. And then I have a vxx, which is going to be this term over here. It's going to be a uxx plus 2aux plus u. That's the vxx term. And then I finally have minus lambda times u. So minus lambda times u over here. So I have a minus lambda u over there, because that's what we have. Great, so let's gather the terms together. So over here on the left-hand side, we're just going to leave a, a single factor of u tau. So this is going to be a u tau. And u tau is going to be equal to what? Let's look at the factors of ux. So we have a ux. Well, let's look at the, well, I just have a plain old uxx, so let's leave the uxx right there. That's what I want to have at the end of the day. I want to have just this equation. That's just the ordinary heat equation, okay? Now let's look at the ux terms. So I have ux terms, and what are the coefficient of the ux terms? Well, I have a lambda minus 1, 
okay, from this term over here. And then what else do we have? I have a 2a ux, so I get a plus 2a, 2a. And then those are the only ux terms over there. That's great. And then I have some u terms over here. What are my u terms over here? The u terms are going to have what factors? Well, we have this a times lambda minus 1. Great. Over here. Then we have a, um, a single negative lambda over here. A plus 1 over here. And then finally, a negative, negative um, b is going to come over here, negative b, and that's going to be my coefficient of u. Okay, excellent. So now I need to choose a and b. Well, look what we can do over here. If I choose, this is the, now this is the linchpin of the argument. If I choose a to be what? If I choose this to be 0, so that will be a negative lambda minus 1 over 2, then what will happen? If that's the case, then this term is going to be drop out and be 0. So that's my choice for a. Great. Okay, what's my choice for, um, well, that's my choice for A now. So now what will that tell me? So this is gonna tell me that this is gonna be A over here. I would like this to be zero also. So I'd like B to be equal to what? I'd like B to be equal to A lambda minus one minus lambda plus one. And so that tells me what B has to be. B has to be this expression over here, which is going to be a factor of um, well, we, can, we could simplify this if we need to, but we'll just write it in the following way. Let's write this as negative one-half lambda minus one quantity squared, and then minus lambda minus one, for example. We could write it like that. And that's the value of b, which will make this expression equal to zero. So by choosing that value of a and that value of b, that will turn our equation into the what? Into the heat equation. This is just the heat equation. And we'll see in further videos how we solve the heat equation, and how when I solve the when I solve the heat equation, how I can reverse this process over here and write down the classically well-known solution to the Black-Scholes equations. One final note over here is that let's see how the boundary conditions are changing. The boundary conditions we can see that what will happen is the boundary conditions for the um, the U equation will change according to these rules over here. So we'll write down carefully in the next video how the boundary conditions are changing, and then we'll see from that how we can solve the Black-Scholes equation. Thank you very much.